So Toronto won the toss. They will be receiving the football. Kicking off for Shreveport, Bjorn Nitmo. And back deep, Bobby Gordon and Mike Clemens. This is Gordon from the 20. And Bobby Gordon knocked out of bounds at the 42 yard line. And it's Gatorade time already. The cooler goes down. Gordon, 22 yard return. Offensively for Toronto, this is how they line up. And there is a change right there. That's why it's highlighted. Francois Boulanger will not start in his place. Chris Schultz will start because this is supposed to be Chris Schultz's last game of the season, so he's going to get his start. Then he's got the man, the trigger guy, Marvin Graves out of Syracuse. A lot of pressure to see if he can perform well. And the newcomer to the Toronto Argonauts, also out of Syracuse via Seattle, Tommy Kane. Tommy Kane and Marvin Graves did not play with each other in college. They missed each other by a class, but they've had some success hooking up with each, uh, with each other so far this season. Putting the ball into play, Toronto number seven, first down repeated five yard penalty. So some opening jitters on the part of Marvin Graves defensively. Take a look at Shreveport. Reggie Rogers included into this defensive line. This is a guy that has some CFL experience out of Hamilton, and he really can push the pocket. And a guy that has a lot of experience, Greg Stuman in the middle linebacker slot, and also Joe Fuller, a defensive back out of Ottawa, joining at the halfback. First down at 15, complete to Paul Masadi. Masadi gets to the 50-yard line before being stopped. Carlton Johnson with the tackle. Paul Masadi needs 23 yards in this football game to become the all-time non-import leading receiver, eclipsing Bobby Taylor's record. Gain of seven, second down and seven. This one intercepted. Joe Fuller, and he takes it to the Toronto 45-yard line so on the Argonauts' first possession, Marvin Graves turns over the football. The wide outside, the halfback, that's Joe Fuller. He's just going to set. He reads the inside guy. Nothing happened. He's going straight up the field. Now he finds the outside receiver, reads the curl route, takes a good look at the quarterback, picks off the ball. Joe Fuller came into this game seventh in the CFL in interceptions, picks up his sixth on the year. The offensive line for Shreveport. And we're playing ball on first down. This one's complete. Mike Johnson has a receiver. That's Wayne Walker. Walker takes it all the way down to the Rhino 20-yard line. Meanwhile, in the backfield for Shreveport, Johnson, Butch Hadnot, the former University of Texas running back, along with Ryan Benjamin, the very versatile slot back. Other receivers, Wayne Walker, Charles Thompson, Lloyd Hill, and David Lucas, Charles Thompson, formerly of Oklahoma University, and he also played for Billy Joe at Central State the last two seasons. First down and 10 from the 22. Pirates keep the ball on the ground. This is Patton running off tackle, and he picks up a couple. Defensively for Toronto. Since the addition of Jeff Fields in the middle, this guy can really push the pocket, takes away a lot of heat off Rodney Harding, who's the leading soccer on this team. Calvin Tiggle, who was nominated as the most outstanding defensive player from the Toronto Argonauts, leads in the middle. And also, Keita Crespina at the halfback spot is really playing some solid ball in the secondary. Second and seven for Mike Johnson. Johnson going in the end zone. Confusion on the pass route there. Incomplete pass brings up third down. Tommy Henry, number six on the coverage for the Argonauts. Take a good look at that face. That's the face of a competitor there. This guy is really as calm and cool as he is on the outside. That heart is beating and thumping on the inside. He knows that he had the pass pattern that he wanted. Good jam by the Toronto secondary. And that was Tommy Henry. Jammed up the play. The ball was just got thrown away. 26-yard field goal for Bjorn Nitmo. And the kick is up, and he splits the uprights. So we're just underway in the first quarter of play from the Sky Dome. 11 minutes, 56 seconds remaining in Bjorn Nitmo. 
Gets the Pirates on the board with a 26-yard field goal. Makes it three to nothing. We've got a three-point ball game in the first quarter of play from the Sky Dome. Shreveport Pirates 1 and 15 on the year. Looking to create some damage and possibly spoil the momentum of the Toronto Argonauts. First two opening series, Gus, that uh, Marvin Grays had run the show back there. Just didn't look very sharp. Looked like they had some problems reading the defense. And when he did have some open receivers, he just threw the ball behind him a bit. But you see him, he just patted his chest. They said, hey, that's my bad. I'll take care of this. I'll run the show from this end. You guys just take care of your responsibility. I'll get the ball to you. Well, it will be first down for Graves at the 48. His team down three to nothing. Play action to the far side, and it's complete. Bobby Gordon with the reception. Close to the first down marker. He's going to be about a yard shy. Anthony Shelton defensively for Shreveport. Fakes the counter, then he pulls the right guard, Jovanovic, and then he has plenty of time. See, he gets his posture set up very well. His shoulders pointed down the field, and he's got a rocket for an arm, and he delivered the ball on the money that time. Gain of nine, second down and one from the 52. Dean picks up the first down and more. Five-yard game, first down, and Paul Mazzotti, as we told you, came into this game needing only 23 yards to become the all-time leading non-import receiver, eclipsing Bobby Taylor's record. And on his first catch of the game, he picked up Picked up seven yards. He only needs 16 yards at the time, Gus. First and 10 for Toronto. Complete over the middle. Graves finding a groove. Bobby Gordon with the reception. Tackled by Joe Fuller. Watch the third receiver. There's the trips to the wide side, to the left side, the out. Then you've got the inside guy working out man-to-man -man all the way across the field. A lot of open area and an easy target for the quarterback, Marvin Graves, to hit. And he makes no mistake of it, getting the ball in to Bobby Gordon. Gordon picks up 12 yards. He was a second-team Division II All-American at Nebraska-Omaha. Gives his team a first down from the 35 of Shreveport. And here's Dean keeping it on the ground, trying to go over the right side. Gets to the 30-yard line. Gain of five yards. Alex Mash with the tackle. Last week against their with their victory against the Edmonton Eskimos, Mo Dean carried the ball 13 times, 59 yards, one touchdown. And he is a force to be reckoned with inside, and it really helps to set up the play action pass when he has great success running the ball. Second and six. Graves steps up, but he goes down. Alex Mash and Reggie Rogers there. Rogers, his first sack of the year, his second sack of the year, along with Alex Mash, who came into this game with no sacks. Buys a little time by standing up in the shotgun, but these guys get off the ball very quickly. Mash and also Reggie Rogers coming from the outside. Mash makes him step up. Reggie Rogers is there to close him down, take him down for the sack. Reggie Rogers was drafted by the Detroit Lions in the first round of 1987. And he picks up his second sack of the year. 45-yard field goal attempt by Wayne Lamley, and it's good. 45-yarder, 540 remaining in the first. We've got a tie ball game from Skydome. Marvin Graves comes back onto the football field. So far, he's four of six, but has thrown two interceptions. And this Toronto team qualified for playoffs for the first time since winning the Grey Cup in 1991. And although the rookie has thrown two interceptions, you have to give a lot of credit to how he's come in, taken charge, and been able to lead this team 
in the latter part of the season. And this is a veteran ball club. They've got a lot of guys that knows what it's like to win, and they've been rising to another level above them. And also the defense has really come on strong the last four or five games and has helped Marvin Graves out. This is Sh Dean over the 50. Stopped at the 52-yard line. Ray Savage with the tackle. Coach Abelovic says he really does like having Marvin Graves in there as a quarterback because he adds that scrambling mobility dimension to his offense. He can do so many things differently than he could have done when the injured quarterback previous to him, Mike Kerrigan, was in the backfield. Pickup of six yards, second and four. Graves running. Has the first down. And finally goes down. Anthony Shelton with the tackle, but not before Marvin Graves picks up the first. As I said, this is the thing that he brings in as a dimension into this game. That's the Donda Osborne coming in. He's right in the blitz. He times it well, probably offside, but he timed it perfectly. But look at the quickness of Marvin Graves, able to elude the tackle, and then also has the presence of mind to be able to pick up the first down after he breaks the point of attack. First down from the 53. Graves underneath, almost intercepted again. This time, Chorus Irvin had his hands on it, but couldn't haul in the football. You have the underneath route, Marvin Graves just checking it and waiting for Bobby Gordon to come all the way across, but he's got really solid coverage on this time. And this is an opportunity that I don't think Chorus Irvin has been a veteran in this league as a cornerback. He came over from that uh, trade for Reggie Barnes out of Hamilton, and this guy can cover. You've got to be able to eat that ball and then scramble with it. On second down, Graves throwing in the double coverage again. This one intended for Bobby Gordon. Good defensive coverage, though, by the Pirates, and that will force Toronto to send on Wayne Lamley to send it away. Dante Osborne comes in, and now all of a sudden you've got Greg Stuman. Now both the linebackers are coming. The young quarterback knows he has to get it away quickly. They put a lot of heat on him, forced the throw, and forces Wayne Lamley into a punting situation. Lamley averaging 37 yards per punt at the 43. High punt, fielded at the 20. Wayne Walker gets over the 25 to the 26-yard line. 33-yard punt, five-yard return as Mike Johnson jogs back onto the football field. And he'll try to get something going for this Shreveport Pirate football team. Gus, I had an opportunity to sit down and just talk with Mike just a little bit after the practice yesterday. And I really am with, impressed with the way he handles himself, the confidence that he has. He knows a bit about this CFL game, as I said earlier. He learned from one of the best offensive coordinators in Joe Pow Pow. Now if he has an opportunity to put what he knows in his head and execute it on the football field, this is going to be a good, solid quarterback for the Shreveport franchise. Martin Patton with the run. Carlos Fowler with the tackle as we take a look at middle linebacker Calvin Tickle. Just been a great force ever since he's arrived in Toronto. As he says it's earlier, 105 tackles coming into this game leads the CFL. He's the most valuable defensive player on the team. He is a leader out there, and everyone around him has seemed to start playing up to his level. Gain of one, second and nine. Johnson over the middle, and it's complete. Charles Thompson all the way down to the 25-yard line. Thompson, what a story. Was an option quarterback at Oklahoma, got into trouble, spent time in prison, ended up going to Central State and resurrected his football career. And as long as he keeps passes like that and gets that open, He'll stay resurrected, okay? Mike Johnson does an excellent job that time avoiding the scramble and avoiding the rush he has, good quick feet, and then being able to see the whole football field and finding Thompson wide open. Last play of the quarter, 58-yard gain for Charles Thompson. First and 10 from the 26. Johnson goes into the end zone, and it's incomplete. 
And that is the end of the first quarter of play with your score. Shreveport and Toronto are locked up in a 3-3 tie. Ready to play ball in the second quarter with your score tied at three from the Sky Dome. Joining us now, wide receiver Jeff Fairholm from the Toronto Argonauts. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. You're My out. Pleasure. You're out with a knee injury, but uh, I bet you'd like to be on the football field about now. Well, anytime anyone's hurt, you always want to be on the football field. But uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's one of those years. You just kind of got to keep going and push through it and get back and play. Jeff, I, I know it looks pretty good. I saw you out there running the other day, yesterday, and then that, that leg looked pretty good making a cut. How, how's it feel? It looked like to be maybe 75, 85% coming back. Yeah, I'd say it's about probably 90% right now, Danny. Uh, I can still beat you one on one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do. This, an incomplete pass intended for Charles Thompson. Mike Johnson getting demolished on the release, and that brings in Bjorn Nitmo to a tip. The field goal, his second of the game, and it's good. 33-yard field goal by Bjorn Nitmo. He uh, went down on the play as well, makes it a 6-3 game. Now take a look at the stats from the first quarter of play in passing yards. Shreveport surprisingly ahead of Marvin Graves and the Argonauts, 97 to 48. But the big statistic, turnovers, two. Two very easy, uncharacteristic uh, interceptions thrown by uh, by Marvin Graves. And this, this is something a receiver that's used to catching a few passes from him could probably comment on. Jeff? Yeah, well, that first one, Marvin, I think, just underthrew uh, uh, Tommy Kane. It looked like it was actually busted coverage in the backfield there, and he just, uh, just underthrew him. The second one, he just threw behind him, just a bad pass. And I think he'd be the first one to admit it. And you know, Jeff, I'm sure you've seen this a number of times, but these kickers out here, they not only kick, but they could be actors as well. Look at Nitbo trying to pretend like he was uh, injured on that play. Look at him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I give him a nine on that one. That, that could be an Academy <laughs> Award right there. But those kickers, and most of them, they're not used to very much contact whatsoever. So <laughs> the least little amount, if you get in the vicinity, they're going to go down. 6-3 ball game. A minute into the second quarter Nitmo ready to send it away and we've spoken a lot about Marvin Graves and his rapid development for the Argonauts from a receiver standpoint how's he playing he's unbelievable you know I, I, I've been around a little bit but, and I'm sure Danny's been talking him up and in my short time in the league I haven't seen anybody as good as Marvin uh, he's got all the tools and I think what, what is the biggest thing with Marvin his greatest asset is he wants to learn he's always in there learning and picking things up he's, he's, uh, he's a great asset to this football team in this league Jeff let's talk about it you got one game left after this one going into Winnipeg next week is that the kind of game that you'd like to come back in before the playoffs and maybe just test this knee out a bit or would it be something that you'd like to wait until the first game in the semifinals well I don't think I want to go into the playoffs having not played in six or seven weeks I'd certainly want to go to Winnipeg even though it's probably gonna be freezing cold I'd like to get back and uh, you know test out my knee and gain a little bit of confidence catch a couple balls and, and get a little bit of momentum going to that first playoff game Toronto penalized on the kickoff a block in the back so they'll have to start from the 22 yard line on first down pressure Graves gets out of the pocket, turns it upfield, and picks up the first down after being tackled at the 35-yard line. Marvin Graves showing that versatility. And this shows you every bit of the quality that Jeff Fairholmes was just talking about. Gets away from the quarterback pressure, and then all of a sudden, now watch the move. Oop, missed him completely. Little shake and bake action, picks up the first down. And this is the kind of asset that Marvin Graves brings to the Toronto offense and that helps out a lot because once he breaks that containment these receivers know they're going to start working a little harder find the open spot and sooner or later Marvin Graves will find him and get the ball to him gain of 12 from the 34 first down complete in the flats Bobby Gordon catches the football but takes a shot by Joe Fuller 
Jeff, go ahead and tell us about it when you're going up, when lining up in the slot and all of a sudden you have that uh, halfback waiting for you in the flat sitting out there and the quarterback decides to hang you out the drive. Well, I don't really care. As long as you get in the ball, I don't think he's going to really worry about it. But Shreveport's doing a really good job of blitzing Marvin and keeping him a little off balance. He's got to get the ball off a little quicker and the receivers have to get a little bit better at, at getting open a little quicker. Gain of three, second and seven from the Argonauts 37 yard line. Complete. This is Masadi. First down. And he continues to edge closer and closer to the record. But there is a flag on the play. And we're going to have roughing against the Shreveport. But look at Masadi the way he works. Look at the footwork. The ball's thrown even before he makes the break. And he settles down inside. Let's take a listen to Neil Payne. Roughing the passer penalty called against Ray Savage, the rookie out of Virginia. And Paul Masadi, with that reception, becomes Toronto's all time Canadian born receiver, passing Bobby Taylor. He has 27 yards worth of receptions this evening. So, congratulations to Paul Masadi. Gives his team a first down from the 48. Quick dump off pass. This is Dwayne Ford who lowers his shoulder and charges ahead for a tackle at the 43. Jeff, by we, Pasquale Davis. If we were sitting in the huddle, what would this play be called? Uh, we just call it a shovel pass. Yeah. That's all we're doing is we're just backing it up and, and allowing the uh, fullback to come out. It's almost like a little screen, almost like a middle screen. Marvin Grace does an excellent job of being able to get rid of the ball. The re one reason it is set up because those defensive linemen are allowed to come up field so quickly, and that is his responsibility to release the ball, and he does an excellent job of getting it to Ford. Blitz, Grave steps up, and as he plays more, Jeff, you can see, he becomes more aware of the decisions that he has to make. Perfect example there. Yeah, it really is. He's doing a good job. Uh, he's not going to pressure it. They're, they're blitzing him. They're putting pressure. I don't think. I think he's been told he's not going to force the ball. He sees the pressure. He just doesn't tucks the ball and starts running. We've seen Flutie do it in this league for years now, and I think you're going to see another Marvin Graves. When those linebackers come up on the line of scrimmage and everybody blitzes, all he has to do is break that initial point of attack, and he's running right to the secondary. So he did an excellent job of reading that blitz. Thank Seven you. yard run, first down from the Shreveport 37. Graves pump fakes and goes down in the backfield. Ray Savage coming up, picks his picks up his sixth sack of the year. He wants to pump, and then all of a sudden, that's number 99. That's Alex Mash that gets his hands up, forces Graves to bring the ball back down, and then Savage just comes from the backside, and he's going to have nothing to do with that kind of fake, and he puts Marvin. Right on his back. And Jeff, talk about the confidence of this team. Had a tough time starting the year, but it seems like the Argonauts have really rallied as of late. Oh, we really have. You know, anytime you put two wins back to back, and especially against a team like Edmonton, we've got a lot of confidence going into this game, and we need that. We need that uh, momentum going into the playoffs. Here's Graves again running, but he will not pick up the first down. Tackled immediately by El Dante Osborne. Good hustle and pursuit defense this time by Shreveport. They stand back. They're going to take away all the coverage. And if Marvin's going to run the ball, they're going to allow him to run. But he has about 20 yards before he can pick up the first down. And this is a quick team. They have some excellent team speed, and they're able to pursue and close in. And when they close in, they make you pay for it. I think that's the biggest thing, Danny, in seeing these um, American teams. You know, they, they've got a tremendous amount of team speed, and they're able to blitz and stay one-on-one, -on -one, and they're able to play a different game than we do up here. 45 yard field goal attempt by Wayne Lamley. He's 29 of 45 on the year. And he picks up his second of the evening. So with nine minutes, 49 seconds remaining in the first half of play, your score, 6-6 from Skydome. And you're looking at Rodney Harding, who's having a career year with 13 sacks, but he feels that one of his teammates could be the MVP, Calvin Tickle.
Well, you got to look at the uh, statistics that he had this year. The guy really doesn't know the CFL game. He's just going sideline to sideline. With the defensive scheme that we have, uh, the offensive lineman really can't get to him, so he can go sideline to sideline to make the plays. And this year, he's having a great year. And like I said, that works out with the defensive line because we're working hard getting pressure up field and keeping the lineman off of him. Rodney Harding speaking about Calvin Tiggle, the six foot, 240 pound first year player out of Georgia Tech. And Tiggle has impressed everybody with his ability to run from sideline to sideline, making tackles like a guy named Dan Kepler used to do for the Edmonton Eskimos. I don't think I quite had the speed of a Calvin Tiggle. That guy can pat and mick him and pick him up and put him down. This guy can get from A to B as fast as anybody I've seen in the CFL. Martin Patton with the reception gain of eight and here's Tiggle making the play quick read of the quarterback's eyes and then all of a sudden he's just going to cover over make the tackle I tell you what he covers a lot of ground he plays a lot with an emotion and with a lot of enthusiasm as Rodney Harding said this kid really doesn't know the CFL game yet the more familiar that he comes and the more expertise and experience he gets playing this game He's going to be a real force to reckon with. Right now, Mike Johnson trying to become a force. Been consistent so far. 107 yards. Taking what the defense has given him. Not going long too often. First down on this play as Martin Patton picks up 10. From the 45. Here's Patton again. And he's stacked up by guess who? Calvin Tiggle. All they have to do is stretch it out. Rodney Harding is going to work, jams the offensive tackle, then fights right down the line of scrimmage. Tiggle's on the outside, and this is what great team defense is all about. Guys doing their responsibilities, getting where they're supposed to get, and then once you get there, make something happen, make the tackle. Brings up second and eight from the 47. Flags on the play. Johnson scrambling. Gets it off. Intended for Charles Thompson. But Keita Crispina locked up in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he does a good job. But there is a flag. I think we could have offsides against Toronto. Let's take a look. Offside, Toronto number 75, second down repeated. That's Carlos Fowler, 6'3", 280 pound, first year player out of Wisconsin. Jumping the gun. Makes it second down and three for Shreveport. Looking right at the bottom now. Carlos Fowler is lined up offsides. In the CFL, you have to give a one yard neutral zone. He was lined up in that neutral zone and it was called immediately. On second and three, complete. David Lucas with the reception and he picks up the first down inside Toronto territory. Lucas, 5'10, 165 pounds, working on Keita Crispina, was an all MEAC selection playing for Florida AM. David Lewis, Lucas has had some experience playing in the CFL. First year was in Hamilton, where he was the team CFL Rookie of the Year that year for Hamilton. First down and 10 from the 48. Patton goes nowhere. Carlos Fowler with the tackle. And take a look right in the middle of your screen also. That's Jeff Fields along with Fowler. And Tiggle's going to get outside. Squeeze the play back down inside. There's no place to go. This Toronto defense is playing very solid, very team oriented, very schemed type of defense. Everybody doing what they're supposed to be doing. Nobody freelancing and doing their own thing. And they're getting results. No gain on the play. Second and long. Johnson complete underneath David Lucas with the reception but he's short of the first down Joe Sardo with the tackle 
gain of eight. He needed ten. So the Pirates have a decision to make. Good look at Jeff Fields in the middle of your pitcher, and he was the guy that was forcing the pocket. And this is one reason that he has been very instrumental in this Toronto defense. Gets in there, covers a lot of area, forces the pockets, and he forces Mike Johnson to throw the ball before he wanted to. Yarn Nitmo in to attempt a 49 yarder. And he's got it. So with six minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the second quarter, it's been a game of field goals, and your score, 9 6. We told you Pinball Clemens, a very feisty competitor, does not want to take any team, especially this Shreveport team, oh, like That would be nice. Uh, I think we have a really nice scheme for tonight. Uh, Shreveport, very tough team, uh, tricky. You don't want to take them lightly. Uh, they're a very talented bunch. Scheme-wise, they haven't necessarily played together, but you can tell in special teams the quality of athletes they have on the team, and if you give them a little life, they can be trouble. I'll tell you what, you take a look at that jacket, Gus, that tie. This man is sharp, but i tell you what, pay cuts and a $2.5 million salary cap hasn't hurt his attire at all, has it, bud? Not at all. 26-yard <laughs> field goal by Wayne Lamley, and he nails it. Ties the ball game up at nine with two minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first half. Good look at Wayne Lamley because he has really had his troubles through the course of this season, taking on both duties, both the field goal kicker and the punter. And in a lot of case, had a tough time with it early, had a number of punts blocked already this season. The Sky Dome was open earlier when we came to the stadium around 5 o'clock this afternoon. The wind started swirling so badly. But then I took a look. The record of the Toronto Argonauts when the dome is open is two and four. I think Coach Jovilovic took a look at that and said, let's close this bad boy and we got a chance to win. <laughs> well, you know how it is, Cap, as a former player, a lot of superstitions on the field, on the uh, sidelines. Wait a and, uh, no, no, we're not superstitions, but wait a second. You, you just own my spot. Move over <laughs> just a little bit. Okay, that's my area. I got okay, it. Okay, no just, problem. Okay, now look, I got to lean with my right foot here. You, <laughs> okay. okay. Now you lead with your right foot. You got it. Okay, now you we're got all right. It. Now we're okay. <laughs> okay. Butch Adnott picks up seven on first down, makes it second down and three from the 42-yard line. Johnson trying to pick up the first down, but is tripped up by Calvin Teagle as well as Rodney Harding. Gus, it'll depend on the spot because it'll be very, very close. It's within the length of a football. Right at the last minute, Tiggle gets in there. Now, this guy, as Rodney Harding says, he's just out there. He's young. He's youthful. He's running from sideline to sideline, making big plays. They're an inch short, third and one. Big third down situation, and Mike Johnson goes over the top. He picks up the first down. And when you get third and a yard or less than a yard, that should be an automatic first down in the CFL because the defensive line, as you can see, has to line up a yard off the ball. Mike Johnson may want to be able from now on to get his helmet down just a bit lower because number 73, Calvin Tiggle, decided to reacquaint himself with him, and he put a helmet right upside his head. First down from the 46-yard line for the Pirates. 113 remaining in the half, and this is Johnson going up top, incomplete. Lloyd Hill, the intended receiver, but Mike Johnson throws that ball in the double coverage. Keita Crispina there to break up the pass, along with Tommy Henry. Keita Crispina had had his troubles in the early part of this season, but he was also playing the other side halfback. But since they've moved him, to the right half from the left half, he has really been a solid performer. And then the safety, George DeMacco, was helping out in that double coverage. There was no way that that pass was going to be completed. On second down and 10, Pirates load up the far side of the field with three receivers. A minute and six seconds remaining. Johnson gets off the pass, but this one sails out of bounds. Reggie Pleasant on defense. Jerry Smith, Terry Smith, the intended receiver. 
And the guy right in Mike Johnson's face, the minute that he's going to release the ball, that's number 77, Rodney Harding. This is his 10th year out of Oklahoma State. Rodney's about 6'3", 260 pounds. As Gus had mentioned to you earlier, 13 sacks this season. The leader in the CFL is Will Johnson from Calgary with 17, and Tim Colfield out of Hamilton has 16. Argonauts bring the pressure. Clemens at the 20, reverses his field, stays on his feet, runs about 10 yards to get one. He's tackled at the 21-yard line. Anthony Shelton with the tackle. Take a good look at Mike Clements. Anytime you see him, it's after plays. That guy's got a big smile on his face. He's just a work hard, has a great attitude about this game and about life in general. First down and 10 from the 21 for Graves. 46 seconds remaining in the half. Three receivers to the left of Marvin Graves. Hand off to Clemens. Clemens dances over the 25, down to the 26. Greg Stuman with the tackle. And the hurry up offense is being applied now by Toronto. Graves calling plays at the line of scrimmage. Fires downfield for Masadi, incomplete. Paul Masadi, an inside route on Carlton Johnson, but Marvin Graves unable to put the ball on him. Streak pattern down the sideline, bending it to the post ever so slightly. And Carlton Johnson was going to have nothing to do with that. All you have to do is realize you've got one on one coverage, man for man, and Johnson has the type of speed out of the UNLV to be able to run step for step with Masadi and not allow him to make that reception. Wayne Lamley standing at the 10 yard line. This one almost blocked, taken on the run by Terry Smith and Smith gets over the 50, 50 yard line and flags all over the place. Looks like uh, Fuller punched Norm Casolo in the face. Uh, guys, I'm still trying to figure out, what do they think them helmets are on there for? <laughs> Man, it's going to take a bare hand and throw it into a $200 or $400 helmet. Unnecessary roughness, Shreveport number 24, first down. That's and Joe Fuller, who has two <laughs> interceptions. He doesn't want to hurt those hands, especially the way he's all in the football today. Well, he's, he's catching. He may have to catch it with one hand because if he makes good contact with that right hand up against the helmet, he's going to break part of that hand. It amazes me. Now, look right at the bottom of your screen, just to the left. Casola just gives a little shot into the face. Then Joe Fuller gets caught on the retaliation, and there's where the penalty happens. So Norm Casolo on the videotape, we see him causing problems on first down. Intended for David Lucas. Lucas can't hang on to the football. Tommy Henry in on the coverage. Gus has two passes already. One by Walker in the early part of the game and this time by Lucas. Balls are thrown perfectly. That's what these guys get paid to do. Concentrate, look the ball in. He, he laid it out there perfectly between two defenders. Lucas would have had a chance to make some big yardage had he been able to bail that pass in. 18 seconds left in the half. Nine to nine is your score from the Sky Dome. Smith staying in the pocket. This one intercepted. Keita Crispina at the far side. Dragged down at the Shreveport 45-yard line. And Crispina gives up the somersault. 15-yard return for Keita Crispina. The first year player out of Temple, his fifth interception of the year. Take a look, some big heat up front by Mike Campbell and Jeff Fields. The ball just sails wide, but Crispina heads up play, playing the ball, able to look the ball in, makes a good reception, comes back, had not put the tackle on him. 
leaves his man, leaves his coverage, plays the ball like a good secondary guy is supposed to do. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is where guys that are just much better athletes these days than athletes back in my day, there ain't no way I could intercept the pass and then be able to do the somersault. Cut. Eight seconds left. Graves to the far sideline, and it's incomplete. Keep now, coming up at halftime, don't forget to stay with us because we'll go back to our studios in Bristol, Connecticut for Sports Smash with Kenny Maine, and he's going to tell us about the NHL talks that took place today. But right now, the man of the hour, Keita Crispina, his fifth interception of the year, and it'll give the Toronto Argonauts an opportunity to put three more points on the board with three seconds left Wayne Lamley ball spotted at the 54 yard line this attempt will be no good they could get one point what a great heads up play what a great heads up play but they don't give it to him I what a terrific effort by Terry Smith of trying to get this ball out of the end zone, not give up a single point. So at the end of the first half of play, your score, the Argonauts lead Shreveport 10-9. And take a look at your statistics from the first half of play. First downs on the side of Toronto. Passing yards, though, go to Shreveport. The time of possession also in the favor of the Argonauts and the big statistic so far two interceptions by Toronto quarterback Marvin Graves 34 plays for the Argos 29 for the Shreveport Pirates. Well, we're ready to start the second half of play Shreveport will be receiving the football as Wayne Lamley the kicker and the punter prepares to kick off from his own 35 yard line. Slow first half of play, but Marvin Graves has had the ability to lead his team dramatically in the second half, especially the fourth quarter. So we'll see if he can do that this evening. Gus, I can guarantee you that Coach Obilovich had a little chat with these guys at halftime because he would not be very impressed with the first half performance. Ryan Benjamin at the 40-yard line breaks a tackle. Benjamin gets up to the 50 finally dragged down by Dave Irwin. And Shreveport, the only team in the Canadian Football League that has not scored at least 100 points in one quarter this season. So that tells you that getting in the end zone, period, is just a hard job for them. Well, Gus, it's been a hard test just from day one of, at Shreveport. There's been over 100 guys that have gone through this camp so far. These guys are still trying to learn each other's first name. They haven't had an opportunity to build any time for continuity. On first down, this one incomplete, intended for Charles Thompson. That one hits him right in the chest, probably the worst place, and the problems have come quite often for this Shreveport team being last in the CFL in all of these categories. But the positive thing is they are an expansion club. Unlike uh, Baltimore, they have struggled like expansion clubs are supposed to. And remember one thing. I mean, they're only one point behind. They're still in this game. And Toronto was very fortunate to beat them the first time around 35 to 34. Mike Johnson gets out of trouble, lofts it downfield, and it's broken up at the last minute of the play by Calvin Tiggle. I tell you, this guy is just all over the football field this evening. Gus, that's a middle linebacker that's down about 25 yards deep, and he had to, once that ball was in the air, he had to make up about 15 yards to cover all the way across. Now, as Mike Johnson comes outside, he sees the receiver that is wide open down the field, but at the last minute, Calvin Tiggle comes all the way across. He doesn't hit the ball, but what he does, he blocks the vision of the receiver. Pinball inside the five. Pinball trying to pick his way upfield, and he's going to lose a number of yards. Finally tackled at the 10. 53-yard punt, two-yard return for Mike Pinball Clemens. And when you're a punt returner of 
Clemens caliber, you take those chances of possibly losing a lot of yards to see if you can get something going. The thing you're trying to do right then, they had the wall set up to the far side of the field, and Mike knows, and he has the speed, that if he gives some ground, tries to get to the wall, he's got a chance to make a big return. And these guys know on the return team, all I got to do is make my block, and Michael's got a good chance of breaking it, and knowing how he knows how to get it into the end zone. And on first down, they stay on the ground. It's uh, Modine, Toronto, their worst start in terms of field position of the night. Modine taken out of the lineup the last part of the second quarter. Replace him was Michael Clemens. Now they get Modine back inside. They're going to start to rush the ball. Probably going to see the setup of the play action pass a little bit. The Shreveport defense is going to have to respect that Modine can carry it, and it'll open up Marvin Graves to be able to throw the ball downfield. This is Dean again on second down. He needed three yards, but Greg Stuman was there to drag him down. He actually loses a yard on that play, brings up third and four, and out comes the punting unit. Gus, absolutely nothing magic there the first two plays. They're just coming up and saying, my offensive line can come out and kick your... But as far as the defensive line is concerned, defense is not going to have anything to do with it. These guys, if all they have to do is whip the guy in front of them, then they get to the football, and Shreveport does an excellent job of doing that. Third down and four. Lambley punting from the two-yard line, and you hear the crowd there celebrating, cheering, rather. Luke Gossie Jr., the Oscar Award-winning actor, is in attendance this evening from the 50-yard line. And Terry Smith goes down inside Argonaut territory. Gus and that big roar came up when everybody did get a chance to realize exactly who it was, and he put on a Toronto Argonaut hat, and that got the crowd here at the Sky Dome to their feet. So, first down and 10 for Mike Johnson, his team trailing by one point. Just underway in the third quarter of play. Johnson goes over the middle, incomplete to Martin Patton. Patton had both hands on it. That's the fourth drop of the evening from Pirates receivers and running backs. They got to hold on to the football. Well, that's exactly right. That's three or four drop passes right in the middle. Now, take a good look at Rodney Harding in the middle. Just a bull rush, and then he's going to take that big left hand, try to slap away, but that all of a sudden, Rob Wallow is not going to have anything to do with it. Good, quick feet, stays in front of Rodney Harding, and absolutely negates that pass rush. Second and 10 for midfield. Johnson has the first down complete to David Lucas. He's out of bounds at the 42. Right at the end of that play, you could see that Lucas was there, also Charles Thompson, and there's got to be a, a miscue of two receivers being set up within about five or six yards of one another. But fortunately for Mike Johnson, the quarterback, he had some real solid arm strength. He's able to get the ball into the wideout. First down from the Argonaut 42-yard line. 11 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Inside handoff. That's Patton. Patton gets up field. Kelvin Tiggle again with the tackle. Kind of like this. Tiggle's tackle is getting in that side. Now all he has to do is get up underneath the center. Mike Stoll able to drop underneath it. Comes up and grabs a hold of the running back and drops him down for about a four-yard gain. Patton picks up. Four yards, second and six. Johnson going in the end zone, complete inside the five yard line. Charles Thompson with the reception right in front of Tommy Henry. 35 yard reception for the former Oklahoma Sooner and the former Marauder from Central State University in the Wilberforce, Ohio. 
the as NAIA we, conference. As we draw, we just see that he was the second receiver lined up on the three-man side, then he just went down and ran a little close corner. The ball was thrown up. Now just take a look at this. Shreveport has been outscored 68 to 26 in the third quarter. Charles Thompson, two receptions on the day for 93 yards. Earlier, he had a 58 yarder. First down and goal from the three. And it looks like the Pirates will get into the end zone. Martin Patton scores his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And the Pirates come out in the third quarter of play looking extremely confident. They march it right down the field and stick it in the end zone. Butch Hadnock comes in. He's a good lead blocker. Just gets a little piece of Reggie Pleasant. And then the second effort, I got a question. The ball was fumbled to begin with, hit the turf, the knees down. I would probably put it on the one yard line, but they got the break, got the major score for six points. Extra point by Nitmo is good. So nine minutes, 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. The Pirates have taken a six point lead. 16 to 10 is your score and a questionable touchdown by Martin Patton. As I said, it's just a straight lead play. That's had not leading the blocking up front. The piece of pleasant. Now watch the ball come loose right at the last minute. That's Man Namako. The safety comes up. The ball's loose. Then his knees down. Now he gets across, break, breaks the plane. I think they, they got away with one. And that's a happy quarterback that they are glad. They'll take it any way they can get it. When you're one in 15, you deserve a break. Pirates lead at 16 to 10 on a one yard touchdown, a three yard touchdown by Martin Patton. Well, you may be able to call it a one yard touchdown after fumbling on the one and picking it up, but he adds to his numbers, eighth touchdown of the year. And the Pirates, with nine minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter, are in good shape. This is Bobby Gordon from the 11. Gordon gets smacked. A flag on the play. And that draws the excitement out of the Pirate special teams unit. 20-yard return for Bobby Gordon, but there in the middle, he took a lick. They got a feeling. Final 36 on the return, 10-yard penalty, push down. Holding penalty on Toronto. The drive, six plays, 55 yards. Two minutes and 37 seconds to score. A young Shreveport team, but at times, like on this last drive, as we take a look at Lou Gossett Jr., who hopefully will get up in the booth before this evening is over. But if you look at them, sometimes on, on drives like the last one, they get everything clicking and look like a good football team. That's exactly right. And I think it's just a matter of time before Forrest Gregg has been able to recondition this team and get them believing in his philosophy. And even more importantly, Gus, is the fact that they get to line up with the same guys game in and game out. And then you can start building some continuity of having to work together. And here's a good look at Tommy Kane, just a quick hitch. Goes up, knows he's going to get this stuck in the back. Concentrates, looks the ball in, picks up about six yards, make it second and four. Tommy Kane played five seasons with the Seattle Seahawks. Actually was the man to replace Steve Largent once he retired. This one almost picked off again. Goes in and out of the hands of Carlton Johnson. Marvin Graves put a lot of zip on the football. Fortunately for the Argonauts, Johnson wasn't able to hang on. Now here's what happens on the other side of the field when Cliff Bakersfield comes in. He's just going to jam Masati, take him right down and just absolutely eliminate him out of the play. Forces Mike Johnson to have to, I mean, uh, uh, Marvin Graves to have to throw the ball outside. And then, Carlton Johnson almost comes up with the big pick. Lamley angles the ball out of bounds inside the Shreveport 50-yard line. And Mike Johnson, the 
First year quarterback out of Akron. Back on the field. Becoming more motivated as time goes by. But this time he takes a lick. Fumbled in the backfield. Toronto recovers the football. Swift Birch made the recovery. But Jeff Fields put the hit on Mike Johnson. Uh, just take a look. Just a spread out action. Now, this is a load that's coming in the back of Jeff Fields. That's 6'3", 305 pounds that gets Mike Johnson right in the middle of the back. And Swift Birch is really heads up comes up with the fumble recovery. Third sack of the year for Jeff Fields, who was traded to Toronto, with one other player for Reggie Slack from Hamilton. He was an All-Eastern Division All-Star in 1992 with seven sacks and 52 tackles. So Marvin Graves gets great field position from the Shreveport 40. Here's a screen, Masadi breaking over the middle. Masadi dragged down inside the Shreveport 20. 25-yard reception for Paul Masadi. Now, folks, if this looks familiar, remember the last play we showed you where Bakersfield took him completely out of the play? This time, Masadi comes down on the screen, and, and Warren, Marvin Graves is able to get the ball to him very quickly. He's got the screen set up, and then all he has to do, make that good reception, turn the ball upfield, and pick up the big yardage. First down from the Shreveport 17. The pitch to Dean. And Dean is tackled at the line of scrimmage. Big hit put on him by Ron Perry, the outside linebacker. Ron Perry, 6'3", 235 out of ground, and he can cover ground also, go sideline to sideline. And when he gets there, he lets you know that he's been chasing you, and he makes you pay for it. When you take a look at the man they call Obi, Bob Obilovich who won the Great Cup in 1983 here in Toronto. Five Eastern Division championships. His team has second and nine from the Pirates 16. Option, the pitch to Pinball. Pinball cuts it back inside. Stop shy of the goal line. Mike Pinball Clements would have gotten in the end zone if El Dante Osborne wouldn't have came up with a big play. Mike, you saw that little point. He's looking right at Marvin Graves and saying, hey, great call. They put the trips, three receivers to the wide side of the field. They put the fullback to the wide side of the field. And then all they did was come back with the option down the sideline to the short side, give it one-on-one -on -one to Mike Clements out there on the field. First down, goal to goal from the one. Dean, touchdown Argonaut. Touchdown of the year for Modine. All he had to do was get off of that big offensive line up front. Blaine Smith and also Francois Belanger doing an excellent job off the right side. He's hit in the backfield by Anthony Shelton, but big, powerful legs. And this guy goes in at about 5'11", 200 pounds. His momentum gets him into the end zone. And the point after is good. Mo Dean, the 1992 eighth round draft pick from the Seattle Seahawks, makes it a 17-16 game. Mo Dean, a two-time All-Southern Conference player out of Tennessee Chattanooga, scores on a one-yard run, which took four plays covering 40 yards in two minutes and 44 seconds. But this is the play that set it all up. Watch as Marvin Graves comes down and he options off Alex Smash, the defensive end, gets the ball out quickly to Clements, and it's just one-on-one -on -one against Joe Fuller, and that's a tough situation to be. Mike Clements makes the best of it, gets it down to the one, then turns it over and says, hey, Mo, get it in for six. So there are the two key players in that drive, along with a sack by Fields. 
And, and a fumble recovery by Swift Birch. Onside kick attempt. And it's recovered by the Argonauts. Eddie Thomas recovers the football, but Wayne Lamley is down on the field. He was in the middle of all the action. Augustus is a call play when he's going to make this onside kick. All he wants to do is dribble it straight down, and he's going to be the guy that's going to recover it. He's going to try to catch it on the second hop, but you take a look at the shot as he leans down to scoop the ball up. One of the Shreveport guys up front just catches him right in the open rib area, puts a helmet on him, and this could be a very costly injury for Toronto in a sense that in one fell swoop, they lose both their field goal kicker and their punter. Well, the only backup punter that they have is playing the pivot tonight for Toronto. Marvin Graves has punted one time on the year. <laughs> Coach, Coach Obilovich is getting a little smile to him and he's trying to think like, all right, now this is the guy who I have been bringing in kickers for the last three or four weeks to test this young kid out to see if he can rise up to the challenge. And that shows you the kind of courage that kid's got gets up, he's going to smile about it. He says, all I'm worried about, did we get the ball? <laughs> he says, as long as we got the ball, now I'm healthy, now I'm fine. I'll be back. From the 50, the Argonauts successfully pull off the onside kick. Graves over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Troy Dickey. Chorus Urban defensively. Marvin Grace just has not been throwing this ball across the board to all four of these receivers, all these guys out there. Masadi, Gordon, Dickey, Tommy Kane, all these guys have great receiving abilities. You got to be able to get the ball to them, test them, and make these defense start to respect each and every one of them. Could the two Syracuse alumni hook up on this play? Graves going in the end zone, has Dickey, and it's complete inside the 10 yard. Troy Dickey out of bounds at the three. Anthony Shelton forced him out. 46 yard reception for Troy Dickey out of Arizona University. Grace just hangs the ball up. There's a jump ball. It's up in the middle of the air. Now look at the big adjustment that Dickey's able to make. Comes back. Joe Fuller, a veteran halfback. Misjudges it, just does not make the solid play that you got to do. As a defensive player, go up, catch the ball, or knock the ball down at his highest point. He allows Troy Dickey to come back and set up another big play and a scoring opportunity for Toronto. And here's Modine again, going far side. Touchdown, Argo. touchdown of the season of the game rather as soon as they give the ball deep to him and all it does is shows great quick feet he's able to read that everything's blocked up up front off the left tackle but he's got a perfect plant breaks to the outside gets his nose pointed and smells the goal line gets it over for six three minutes 18 seconds remaining in the third Toronto trying to pull things out they lead it Right now, as Modi picks up his seventh touchdown of the year. And we're back in the Sky Dome where Modi makes it a 24 to 16 ball game. The Toronto Argonauts, after looking very sluggish in the first half of play, coming on strong here in the third quarter. And joining us now. One of the most successful and talented actors in the world, Lou Gossett Jr. Mr. Thank Gossett, very, very pleased to meet you. Thank you, It's man. an honor for both of us. All right, thank you. It's well, an honor here. This is a great way to watch a football game here, man. Up in the skybox, eh? Yeah. What brings you to Toronto? I start Iron Eagle 4 on Monday. Yeah. So I noticed that Iron Eagles, they, the, the, the uh, series of 
really taken off in terms of you know doing the films on the fly. Yeah, yeah, it's the best kind of series you do them in film. And here's a return. David Lucas gets it inside Toronto territory. Stopped at the 50-yard line. Both of these teams, Lou, coming out playing tough football in the second half. Kind of slow in the first half, but they're yeah. really going at it right now. Yeah, they're doing pretty good there. Um, you know, Marvin Gray's, um, uh, I talked to him. I saw him last year when I went to watch the Syracuse ball basketball team play. Like my son, he didn't make it. He's the manager of the Syracuse basketball team. But I remember seeing Marvin surrounded by all those girls. You know. <laughs> <laughs> big sports fan yourself? Yeah, very big sports fan. I, I, this is my pride and joy right there. What is that? Uh -oh. That's the back-to-back -back ring for the Lakers. 87-88. Uh -oh. I don't know if we can get... Detroit, before Detroit, see. So obviously, there, back there you go. A little yeah. bit. Obviously, you're a Magic Johnson fan. Oh, Magic, oh. And Michael Cooper, and all those guys, you know. Now this year, it's Phoenix. Phoenix. Uh -oh. Phoenix this year, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got room to put Phoenix on this finger here. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Hey, and these guys think we're worried about a football game. That <laughs> he's got eyes up in the box. Hey, he's, hey, he's in the box here with us, baby. <laughs> Yeah, this is fun here. So do you get a chance to follow the CFL much or? I've, I've been getting to follow. I started following, I followed the year that, that Rocket was here. And I followed the year that Warren was, uh, a couple of years that Warren was here. Warren is one of the greatest I've ever seen, Warren Moon. And um, I know Rocket wishes uh, the field was as wide down in LA as it is up here. No <laughs> Here's Johnson firing in the end zone and it's incomplete. Intended receiver Wayne Walker. Good coverage, though, by Reggie Pleasant. Well, Lou, I have to tell you, you mentioned Warren Moon. That's one of the great cup rings from 1981. And Warren, right. Warren. Warren Moon was our quarterback. Oh, yeah, yeah he was a great five, one. He was had a, great a chance one, to man. play five years with him there. Yeah, he's still a great well, one. Well, he's still trying to scratch out a measly yeah, kind of measly, living measly existence. Kind of living there. Of, uh, Houston is so sorry. Yeah, well, they, so I sorry. Tell you what, they need him. They made a mistake, didn't they? You don't know how good you got it till it's gone, baby. That's right. There's a song about that, isn't it? I, I think it is, and I think <laughs> Houston should be kicking themselves oh, in the butt right now are. all about it. They are, boy. They made a mistake. Second and 10 from the 51. At least they should have gotten a quarterback who knows about the run and shoot. That's exactly. <laughs> Paul Clatney defensively breaking up the pass for the Argonauts. Now, folks, I feel kind of bad here, a little inferior. We got an NBA championship ring. A CFL championship ring, and all I'm wearing is my little college class ring, so I'm going to put this in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and 10 from the 51. Yeah, but see, you're the play-by-play -play guy. You're the lead guy. We don't get to say anything until <laughs> after you Well, I don't everything. know. I don't know. With uh, Lou Gossett in the, in the broadcast booth, I think he automatically takes the lead. <laughs> and here we go. Clemens. Uh-oh. Uh He's trouble. He's over. Has one a one blocker one. in front of him. Oh, somebody caught him. Clement still on his feet. There he goes. At the 30-yard line. And Clement has oh. finally knocked out of bounds inside the street court 20. All oh, right. Mike All right. Pinball Clement. Take the ball. Just that's a perfect example of right there why this player is one of the most electrifying, exciting players. Not only in the CFL, but you don't see this in any sports franchise anywhere to see a guy that's got the ability like that and just the heart to keep going. 90 yards on that return. And earlier, he told us that this would be his night to take one back. I take a very good chance. You know, I'm only as good as the guys in front of me, but we got a a mighty good crew of guys in front of me on the, both the punt team and, and uh, punt return team and kickoff return. They fight real hard for me. It's been a long time since we brought one back to the house, and, and I can't think of any better night to the night. Mike Pinball Clemens, 90-yard return, and that must make you happy seeing something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I to see he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> The pinball, yeah. bouncing around and making things happen at the Sky Dome. A game that started in the first half. It was kind of slow, but if you've tuned in for the second half of play, basically you haven't missed anything because this is what's made this game special thus far. Second down, Graves going to the end zone. To jump ball. Incomplete Joe Fuller. 
knocks it out of bounds, and there is a flag on the play. Well, Marvin's going to be all right. He needs this season to, to get it together. He's going to be fine. So, did you play much ball growing up? I played basketball growing up. Yeah. Uh, where'd you grow up? Yeah. In New York. You know, and I, wanted, I was on the, I went to NYU at Happy Harrison and South Sanders, and that's when I got drafted by the Knicks. But I also got drafted by Sidney Poitier and had a choice. <laughs> so Holding. Round of 32. Decline. Third down. Now, I'm sure that's a bit of information that a lot of people aren't aware of. No, no, drafted I guess by the Knicks. I'm drafted by the Knicks, yeah. Along with Happy Harrison went to the Lakers, and uh, Sat Sanders went to the Celtics, and I went to the Knicks with uh, Cal Ramsey. Shooting guard, small forward. Small forward, shooting guard. And oh, defense, you, defense. Specialty defense. Defense. <laughs> Ask Hot Rod. 32-yard <laughs> attempt here yeah. by Wayne Lamley. Kick is up, and oh. this one off the upright. Lamley finally missing a field goal. And Coach Bobby Obilovich with his team on top 24 to 16, trying to bring this program back. One of the all-time winningest coaches in the Canadian Football League. Two-time coach of the year, 204 <coughs> games, 105 wins in both the regular season and the playoffs. This is the last play of the quarter. It's complete. Charles Thompson with the reception. That is the end of the first, the third quarter of play, and we'd like to thank Lou Gossett for pleasure, joining man. us. All and right. coming up, the final period of play when we come back yeah. on the news. Good luck. Good luck. Toronto Argonauts giving their fans a reason to come out to the ball game again. And they have started to come. Third consecutive 20,000 plus crowd at the Sky Dome. And they had a chance to see a punter mix it up a little bit. Terry Smith does an excellent job of getting to the wall, getting outside. He runs right through the, the tackle, attempted tackle by Keith Costello. And it, any time that it forces your punter to come over and make the touchdown saving tackle. This guy told you, hey, he, he got knocked around. He got dragged off the field because he got a helmet in the chest. But he's doing it all. He's punting well. He's field goal kicking well tonight. Now he's getting on the tackling chart. So the Pirates will start from the Toronto 28 yard line, their best field position of the evening, trailing 24 to 16. Gus, the young quarterback, again, just needs to be patient right now. Not try to jam it in the throw to try to go for the home run ball, but that's not going to happen. Well, he's going to go for the home run. Wide open receiver. Incomplete. Charles Thompson at least five steps in front of Keita Crispina. But Mike Johnson was unable to hit him with the football. Take a look. It's the out and up, and Crispina just bites terribly on it, and the guy is wide open as Charles Johnson and all that the young quarterback Mike Johnson has to do once he can read that, lead him back to the middle of the field just a little more because nobody's back there to help, and that could be an easy six points. Second and ten. Johnson incomplete again. Now what do you do? Down 24-16. Do you go for it or do you kick the field goal? Well, if you take a good look at Mike Johnson, he wants to go for it. He felt that he's got it there. I mean, he's, had, he's been there. The last two plays were opportunities to make big things happen. He had guys open. He just didn't make the completion. And he wanted to go for it. But I think if, when you look at a guy like Forrest Gregg, who's been around for a long time, and he can see that there's six minutes and 30 seconds to go on this clock, Take the three points now, then maybe we'll get back down there again. If we score six, it'll put us in the lead. 35-yard field goal by Nick Moe. Perfect. Six minutes, 24 seconds left in the ball game. Pirates add three more points. They now trail by five. Hey, this, this this is not anything that's conservative, buddy. That's right. We got Dan Kepler <laughs> out of a uh -uh. shirt and tie and looking all funky and whatnot told, with hey, the vest. Hey, I asked my son. I said, I'm going to go work for the ESPN2, the deuce. I said, can you help me? He's 10 years old. I said, and they told me I, I got to dress hip. And he started to think for a little bit. You know, he's pretty quiet. And I think, well, that's good because he's putting some thought to it. 
And then he looked at me, Gus, and he says, Kep, he said, Dad, give it up. He said, you don't stand a chance. <laughs> he said, you're double digits. The first one is four. He said, you just don't have any chance. <laughs> So Michael this, this, Kepley. This is it. Michael, Michael Kepley just said, Dad, just act your age, 41. You well, got to be there. I'm sure he's proud of you. You've given it your best shot here. Here's the pinball at the 18-yard line. He gets out of bounds at the 43. And a lot of pressure coming up now on the... Shreveport defense because this young quarterback Marvin Graves is a tough competitor when the game's on the line. Well, we're going to try to put some pressure on him. Uh, they're probably going to be sending me quite a bit uh, from the middle position to get a five or six man rush on the guy. We feel like if we can keep him in containment and put some pressure on him early, then we might can rattle him because he is a rookie. Graves passing on first down. And they have put the pressure on the rookie and complete to Pinball Clemens. They really have. The only time that they've gotten hurt a bit is when Graves has been able to read that blitz coming. They showed it too early, gave him a pre-snap read, and he either ran the quarterback draw or the quick uh, uh, draw play to either Clemens or, or Modine. And that, then as soon as they were able to break that initial line of attack, they were running right to the secondary. Second and 10 from the 43. Screen pass. Clemens tackled as soon as he catches the football. El Dante Osborne. And they will force the Argos to send it away again with five minutes and 30 seconds left. Pirates trailing by five. So what? can you expect Dan Kepley out of a rookie quarterback? What do you want to see? You know he's going to make some mistakes. Well, you certainly are. I think you want you want to see the, the kind of composure that both of these quarterbacks are showing. You also want to see them getting better series after series and utilizing your assets. If you come in there and your ability is to scramble, to sprint out, to buy a little bit more time, do the things that work for you and then be able to it produce the, the end result is get the job done, execute the plays. This one almost blocked. Lamley gets it off by a hair. Lucas running the football, and he stopped at his own 20-yard line. Four minutes, 59 seconds left in this contest. Argos leading 24-19. Mike Johnson is two minutes and 43 seconds to get his team on the board. He has to get a touchdown. Trailing 24 to 19. This one complete to Ryan Benjamin underneath at the 50 yard line. Don Moan with the tackle. And it's a heads-up play. Don't try to force the ball deep. Don't throw it into coverage. Toronto's going to play a deep zone. They're going to force you to throw the ball underneath, and then they'll react on it. Go ahead and take that for a while. Set up a little something. Then you may be able to pick up 8 or 10 or 12 yards on a deeper pass route. Three play situations from here on out. And here's Johnson, and Johnson goes down. The good old standby is 14th sack of the year. The 10-year veteran, Rodney Harden. That 14th sack is a landmark for Rodney Harding coming into this game that we had, as you had mentioned earlier, 13 sacks in 1987. So this, to date, is the best career season in, for sacks for Rodney Harding, the 33-year-old defensive tackle. And they punt it away. Interesting call. Clemens flags all over the place. Clemens at the 50. He needs to beat a punter. And Mike Pinball Clemens is slung to the ground by Aaron Catter, the punter. Pinball is hurt. 
and so is Ryan Benjamin as he jogs off the field. Both these teams giving it 120 percent in this ball game. And both of these teams on punt returns making very Holding. crucial mistakes. Number 17 on the return. First down. Eddie Thomas called for holding will bring pinball's return back. Look just to the right of your screen. That's Eddie Thomas. One on one. And he goes right out of the screen. The flag is held on. He's got a hold of the cloth. And those are the kind of guys they're working hard to try to make something happen because they know if they get their block that a guy like the pinball can get it in for six. You just got to be so disciplined and so smart about making good, solid blocks. And if you can't make it, then don't put yourself in the risk. Graves will start from his own 29, a minute 45 remaining. This is Shamsed Dean to the 30, and he's pushed back. Reggie Rogers, first-year player in the CFL out of Washington, makes the tackle. Tremendously crucial play for the Shreveport defense if they have an opportunity to get back in this game to be able to stop Toronto right now with 1.30 to go, force them into a punting situation. Second and eight from the 31. Huge defensive play for the Pirate defense. Here comes the blitz. Gray stays in there, and this one is almost intercepted again by Joe Fuller. Fuller with the chance for his third. Couldn't hang on to the football, but that does force Toronto to send it away. Gus, as I said, the great thing that this three-port secondary can do is that they can build themselves around a man-to-man -man defense. They can send linebackers, they can send halfbacks, and they have such great team speed in the secondary and in the back end that they can cover any team, any receiver, hope one, and they take that gamble. Third down and eight from the 31, Wayne Lamley at the 12-yard line, and he will give Mike Johnson one more shot at the end zone. Great punt by Lamley. Fielded at the 35. This is Lucas. Lucas outruns Lamley. Here we go. Lucas sprinting for the end zone. Touchdown, Shreveport. No, no flag. flag. That's it, baby. And the Pirates storm the field. The bench clears off. 75 yard kick, punt return by David Lucas and the Shreveport Pirates with 58 seconds remaining in this ball game are headed for their second win of the year. Toronto goes to sleep and Shreveport just wakes up and puts out some determination. And David Lucas takes it on his own shoulders, breaks a few tackles and shows some great speed that he has and gets the ball in the zone. David Lucas, who we've already told you earlier this evening, has dropped two or three passes, but he certainly made up for it on that great 75-yard return. So with 58 seconds left to play from Skydome, the Pirates have taken the lead, but in the CFL, it's plenty of time. A field goal can still win. The longest punt return in Shreveport history. They've been around one year, but this one may stand for quite a while. 75 yards for the former Rattler from Florida A&M in the all MEAC selection. Now the special teams. And. The crowd is starting to get on their feet here at Skydome. They're anticipating something good from Marvin Graves. Two trains of thought. Now, the two-point conversion is also in effect in the CFL. Now, what Coach Forrest Gregg decided to do was to go for the one point, gives Treeport a two-point lead. Had they gone for the two points and not made it, they would only have a one-point lead, then a single point, a punt, could have tied the game, so maybe that's the thought. Good explanation, Mike Lemons on the return. 
Gets the ball up to the 36 yard line and Marvin Graves who led the Argonauts to their biggest fourth quarter comeback in team history after coming off the bench late in the third quarter three weeks ago against Hamilton. Has an open field in front of him. Can he do it again? Gus Lamley's longest field goal to this to this date is 50 yards, so they've got to make up about 25 yards with 53 seconds on the clock. First down. This one incomplete. Bobby Gordon, the intended receiver, but there is a flag on the play. Here's Neil Payne. Rubbing the passer, number 77, Shreveport. Reggie Rogers, an NFL veteran with Detroit, Tampa Bay, and also the Buffalo Bills, a crucial penalty there. Rogers locked up one-on-one -on -one with Pierre Bercheval, and you could not really see from that angle if Pierre actually knocked him into it, but you can see he dropped his head when he hit Marvin Graves, so he wasn't trying to avoid that contact. First and 10 from the 50. Graves fires. Incomplete. Norm Consolo, the intended receiver. Ron Perry defensively. And Graves took a tough hit after he released the football. Good pressure up front. That's uh, Alex Mash and also Ray Savage, both of them meeting at the backfield. And the guy in between them was Marvin Graves. I only question Graves' choice to go with Consola that time because they haven't thrown a pass at him all game long unless they were trying to surprise the Shreveport defense. 41 seconds left. Graves to the near to the far side complete. This is Clemens. Clemens at the 49 dragged back to the 51, but they will give him his forward progress. Ball being spotted at the 48-yard line with 33 seconds left in this ball game. Your score, Pirates on top, 26-24. No huddle offense for Toronto. And a flag on the play. The illegal procedure against Toronto will probably back it up. <laughs> Wayne Lamley. Illegal procedure, 68 Toronto, first down repeated. Stravanovich, the right guard, gets back out of his stance very quickly. That's five yards. Gus, they're going to need to make up from this point about 15 yards to get into Lamley's field goal range. Wayne Lamley's average this year kicking field goals is 31 yards, but so far he's kicked two field goals this evening around the 45-yard range, and he struggled to get the ball over the crossbar both times. Graves gets it off, looking for Gordon. Incomplete. Out of bounds at the 20. No catch. Antoine Worthman, good defense. When the bullets are flying, Gus, it is so hard to make those quick decisions on the run, but this was an opportunity where all of a sudden, Graves has a chance to break it, and now that's Forrest Greg taking a look downfield, and he'll give you the call. Uh-uh, no chance, out of bounds. But just to finish my thought, Graves had a chance to scramble for about 10 yards, but he decided to shoot the bullet and fire it downfield, and the pass was completed, but out of bounds. Second and 15 from the 53. Graves over the middle, complete to Masani. Masani at the 30, down inside the 30 at the 29. You can see that Marvin Graves is calling the timeout. There is one timeout per half in the CFL. But take a look downfield. Nobody's there, no defenders. It's one on one. Masadi comes across and it's a perfectly thrown strike. He's able to get inside of Carlton Johnson. 
The ball is lined up first and 10 on about the 31 yard line. If they were to snap it and kick it right now, it would probably be about a 37 yard field goal. And you can see for yourself, folks, Coach Obelovich is taking no chances whatsoever. He's bringing on Wayne Lamley, and it looks like about a 37, 37 and a half yard field goal attempt. Two rookies have dominated the game for Toronto. Marvin Graves in the pivot at quarterback. And now, rookie Wayne Lamley will come on to attempt a 38 yard field goal with 11 seconds left for the Toronto Argonauts. The Shreveport Pirates have decided to take their time out right now. Maybe just give that Wayne Lamley and that rookie just a little extra time to think about just how important this kick is. Ball sitting in the middle of the field. 11 seconds left. This game resting on the shoulders of Wayne Lamley out of the University of Utah. And it's good. with the big field goal there and with seven seconds left Mike Johnson will put it up this one complete at the 50 yard line Greg Ballard his third reception of the game one second remaining on the clock 27 to 26 is your score They're sending Nitmo on as quickly as they can to try to attempt the field goal. This will be probably about a 56-yard kick. And this is well within his range because his record so far this season, the longest, is 56. They're teeing it up at the 55 to win the game. No time on the clock. Nitmo long enough. It's good! Enjoy it fast with the Shreveport Pirates. This is the CFL, and this is what it's all about. It ain't over till it's over. With no time on the clock, Bjorn Nitmo hits a 55-yard field goal, and Shreveport wins their second game of the season, 29-27. 29-27, Shreveport wins their second game of the year. They improve to 2 and 15. For Dan Kepley, I'm Gus Johnson. So long, everybody from Toronto.